damn Spriggs. This accursed city will be the death of me. You seem troubled, friend. That's because I am. Greatly so, in fact. What's happened? I was robbed. The old Balkan file. Though I've managed to restore what's mine, I fear it's ruined. You mean the book? This is no ordinary book. It's an almanac. The first I ever wrote. <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, pleased to meet you. Hatham Kenway. You must be new to Boston. Why do you say that? You're still possessed of virtue. <laughs> to stop and help an old lout like myself. I... I don't mean to impose, but... You seem a spry fellow. Should you happen to find my missing pages, I'll reward you. Look, I'm not sure if I... It's all right, all right. If you have the time, hurrah! If not, no harm done. The thing is useless in its current state anyway. But, should you somehow manage to restore it, you'll find me inside that general store over there. For the white well, house. that was interesting. Hello again. More almanac pages? Well, not quite. It's a treatise, actually. Oh? Concerning what? The benefits of taking an older woman as a lover. Really? This I'd like to hear. First and most obvious, they're wiser. And so this makes for far more stimulating conversation. Makes other things more stimulating as well, but more on that in a moment. All right. Your argument for experience makes some sense. Second, when beauty fades, women must improve their utility. Lest they be discarded and forgotten. Rare is an old woman who is not also kind, compassionate, and good. That's something of a generalization. But also true. Now, on to the third. Older women cannot conceive. Which means one less thing over which to fret. In fact, you also decrease the chance of acquiring something like the French pox. Its presence clearly visible, or the woman dead. And should one desire a child? Then make a young woman your wife. Let the older one be a mistress. And that brings me to my fourth point. With age comes prudence. An older woman is less likely to reveal your indiscretions. Yes. I suppose you know quite a bit about that. And proud of it, thank you. As to the fifth reason, because in every animal that walks upright, the deficiency of the fluids that fill the muscles appears first in the highest part. The face first grows lank and wrinkled, then the neck, then the breast and arms. The lower parts continuing to the last as plump as ever, so that covering all above with a basket and regarding only what is below the girdle, it is impossible of two women to know an old from a young one. And, as in the dark, all cats are gray, the pleasure of corporal enjoyment with an old woman is at least equal and frequently superior, every knack being by practice capable of improvement. You mad bastard. Well, it's true, and believe me, I should know. I've sampled a great many. You should try one as well. Like a fine wine, they only improve with age. Although I suppose if left unattended too long, some have a tendency to sour. And that, my friend, is a most unpleasant experience. Better to work in a field often plowed, you know. Is there more? Indeed, indeed. The sixth is this. The sin is less. To take a maiden head is a great responsibility. Mishandled, it can ruin lives. No such risk with an older woman. And this implies the seventh. Younger women are more given to compunction. Anxiety and unease are not present in the more aged and experienced. And as to the last of my reasons, well, it's really quite simple. Older women are so very grateful for the attention. You make a compelling argument, Mr. Franklin. I might just have to run a few tests myself. I highly recommend it. I owe you a great thanks, by the way. What for? 
Speaking with me. You see, I have very few friends in Boston these days. And what did you do to earn their ire? Started with a cartoon I drew, suggesting unification. How else can we hope to withstand the French menace? I proposed something similar at the Albany Conference as well, and it ruffled quite a few feathers. See, I've begun to wonder if Parliament best serves our interests. The colonies might be better off independent than autonomous. Most of my peers, however, haven't taken kindly to the suggestion. Are things truly so bad under the Crown? But you've answered your own question. Under. Why under? It should be side by side. Does France reside beneath Britain? Do the Italians? The Prussians? The Spanish? No. Oh, sure, they may disagree from time to time, even come to blows, but they stand on equal ground. And we should as well. Are the colonies not simply an extension of the kingdom, though? Another borough, if you will? No, we are not. We've evolved into something else, something distinct. Hmm. I suppose it's only natural to desire parity. We leave behind our parents, our childhoods, our homes, and seek to find a place in the world. If it's true for a person, why not a nation? Yes, yes, exactly. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. Please, don't let me keep you from your work. We must now all hang together. Yes, we must indeed all hang together. We shall all hang separately. You are once more our savior. I must speak with the commander. He's gone to try and hold New York. The British intend to take it. I fear we'll need to recall our men from Quebec as well. It's one thing to declare our independence. Now, my friend, we must make it so.